Did you kill the white man who killed you? Each time I talk about Cataclysm, it comes out a bit different. I kind of feel like one of the beautiful things using all these different clips is the breadth of expression. There's so much to dig into, and there's a lot of different details that I want to bring nuance to and, yeah, dig into. But then by talking about it, I'm also changing it. I made this intentionally as an audiovisual work, not a verbal analysis. So once I start using my words, well, I'm going to be distorting that intent. But I do like the idea of talking about it. I hope it will be interesting. And I hope it uplifts, not diminishes, the original artwork. Kind of like how I hope Cataclysm uplifts and not diminishes all the different clips that I'm borrowing. So yeah, each time I talk about Cataclysm, it's going to come out a bit different. There are some things along this trip that I feel confident in talking about. What I'm going to do is just share what I think is true. That is based on what I've learned and experienced and researched. And, you know, hopefully for someone who's not on board with that, um, well, two things. One thing is I hope that this artwork, Cataclysm, communicates some of that in a different way. And I hope that people do their own research and learning and experiencing to try and understand some of these things or consider some of these things themselves. So to me, the original Star Wars movies are pretty great. There's awesome sets, vehicles, fun characters, the John Williams soundtrack evidently I enjoy very much. Parts 1 and 2 are brimming with a genuine love for Star Wars. I try to draw out the characters and emotions and arcs that I really enjoy and a part of me connects to. But Star Wars doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's situated as a cultural icon, a powerful influence, like a kind of empire. And the cultural floor that Star Wars builds out, that can become a bulk of a person's identity, information, their cultural floor. Cataclysm, then, is a bit like the rebel army, wanting to puncture the grip of that cultural floor on the world and the individual. In Cataclysm, Star Wars is representing that cultural floor, a kind of ego or identity that in essence is aligned to the ego or identity of the global north, or the west. That cultural floor I will call the white man. Did you kill the white man who killed you? So what do I mean by white man? It doesn't literally mean those with white skin, or men, it represents a value system, an identity, especially proliferated by white men, but penetrating all kinds of people and affecting global systems. The white man is embodied in white stories, white perspectives, like Luke Skywalker. It's embodied in in middle and upper class obstacles and aspirations expressed through capitalism. It's dominated by patriarchal, heteronormative relationships and aesthetics, Eurocentric 
and US-centric norms and stories, this white man entity shapes our relationship with the world around us, meaning it shapes us and it shapes the world. Think like the US, the UK, NATO. And to give an example of the power of this white man, consider that the US is the wealthiest country on this planet with the largest carbon footprint per capita on this planet, the largest prison population per capita. All of that built on slavery and effectively policy of extermination of the people who were already living on that land when these settlers arrived from their home country in Europe. And then, what does that tell us when we learn that the U.S. spends the most money on its military by a large margin, and that military is spread all around the world? If there's anything you want, anything at all, come to me. I'll be your guardian angel. Did you kill the white man who killed you? I'm not dead. <laughs> So this is a big entity, and it's become fused with the spirit of the entire Earth and our intimate selves. Cataclysm lights the fire of battle, a battle to regain our spirits from this abuse of power. And it's a battle. It's, it's serious. It could be violent. And it's not glorified, I hope. This is a battle a journey toward killing the white man before it kills us a transformation of identity instead of finding temporary shelters and rehabilitating those apartments the city is pushing through a deal to knock them down and replace them with a high income condominium and a shopping mall again like air quotes on white man as explained And it's worth pointing out that I'm speaking from a body with white skin and as a person with some significant amount of white historical context. To do battle with the white man inside me and around me is not destructive. It's constructive. It's nourishing and healing. It's responsibility and reparation. It's a resolve to fight back against the abuse of a foundation that's accumulated gross power. It's a commitment to life, out of a love of life. For me, watching Cataclysm, experiencing it, it's cathartic. It imbues me with strength and determination. It's a well of hope that shows white culture for what it is, a myopic slice of human condition in such an experience expansive world of experiences. This may be the only time I'm to see you again. Ten seconds. Nine. Cataclysm is comprised of clips from 88 different pieces of media. And over the last four years, as that began to take shape, I started to feel nourished by it as I watched it back. And my hope is that people watching it and re-watching it now will also get a dose of that that power to hold inside them to combat the white man inside them and around them. And then they would leave food for breakfast and lunch. The harassment, the um, lack of equity that has been provided to disabled individuals every time you raise issues of sex but equal. The status quo is kind of fucked up and destructive. The white man isn't evil. It's on a pedestal. It has too much power, and it needs to be recontextualized in a bigger picture. That's the point here with pulling the rug out from under our hero, Luke Skywalker. I mean, there's good stuff about the guy. That's the point of part one and two, to share in that journey, and then to let go of it, and to recontextualize it, to transform and grow. All of the Western nations have been caught in a lie. The lie of 
the pretended humanism. That needs to be recognized in a concrete way that requires real change and action and sacrifice. We need to face it and grow healthy and nourished across all of our planet. You know, not taking the burden of the world onto our shoulders. We're just humans and we're limited and I'm just me and not that powerful <laughs> over here. But to recognize these things and to build from the ground up cooperatively with these things on our minds and, well, to try and do that, to try and do that and see where we get. Not everything that is faced can be changed. But nothing can be changed until it is faced. It's so strange that you don't remember any of your poetry. To end this video here and this commentary, I'm presenting here just a prioritized list of media that have been used in this video. I recommend every movie and game and show that I've used in Cataclysm, but these in particular I'm choosing to highlight. And I recommend checking out my vignette series, which is kind of like finding little nuggets that I want to share from various movies that I like uh, into kind of this two-minute edited clip. So uh, that, that vignette series you'll see some movies that are in Cataclysm. There's also some movies that aren't in Cataclysm. But yeah, I think it's an opportun another opportunity to kind of dig in a little more. And I might make uh, more vignettes as time goes on. We'll see. I hope you check that out. I hope you dig in. There's a lot, a lot here, I think. So, yeah. <laughs>